Here it's a very good topic, how not to get influenced by what is happening outside. Do you see yourself into the mirror? In the mirror? Yeah. Yes. Do you see it? Okay. How many times you have uh, seen yourself into the mirror? Lots. Lots. <laughs> Does the mirror keep your images? No. No. I swear. That is the answer. The I mirror see. does not keep any images. Every time you see. Let's go. The criminal looks into the same mirror, the good man, the monk looks into the same mirror, mirror says, okay. And the moment they are out, they are gone. Once we work on the mind and purify the mind so that the mind becomes a mirror, then the problem of the stress is not solved, it is dissolved. You need not to worry about it. It is the mind that causes these problems. Go a little deeper. Imagine you see into the mirror and the mirror keeps that image. And that image is our personality, and the personality is our attitude, our behavior, our skill sets, our different labels. So the next time David looks into the same mirror, the previous image says, come on, last time you were cool, but this time you seem to be hesitated. <laughs> See that? Now refer to the mind. It is the same mind which says, not only about me, but also about others. Hey Jerry, you were very good yesterday, but now today you are not good, David says. So the David mind is reflecting with two sets of images. The moment you have two and more sets of images, you have a problem, you have a conflict. I have a confusion. Did you understand that? We are going slowly. Yeah? That's a pretty uh, <laughs> deeper concept. But we are going slowly. Let me repeat it. Mirror never keeps its images anyone can look at. The one who is labeled as a criminal, one who is labeled as a politician. <laughs> One is labeled as a person with a negative energy, one is a person labeled with a positive energy. <laughs> See that? Mirror never keeps those images. But mind is the mirror. We were so much spontaneous in our childhood. Yeah. Maybe your dad, when you were three and four years old, Alice said, don't do it. So for a second you were still upset, but the next moment that impression is gone. But now if the Steve the same, the same thing, it will create an impression. Now that you are wrong and you are right and you did this thing and you did this thing. I'm trying to make you understand through many ways. See that? So what happened to this mind <sighs> from moving from the childhood to the adulthood. Can you figure out? Can you make it out? And that is the problem. That is the source of the problem. Can you make out? As we grow older, from nowhere, David, this I comes into being. That I sticks to that image which it keeps. And that I 
starts living in the world. That, what is this I? This is a functional I that is present in the mind. The mind has four aspects. And I'll compare it to the mirror. First, ah, the constantly thinking mind. What thoughts you had when you drove here? <laughs> what are the thoughts? What are the thoughts, Jerry, you had when you <laughs> were coming here into the studio? That is what is known as the mind. So mind is one, there are four functional aspects. Then this mind takes a decision, no, I have to drive here to listen to this beer guy and we'll do the practice, then I'll be relaxed and after some time I'll be stressed. That is intellect. Third functional aspect is the I-ness. The moment you say, I'm here, it is the mind. It is not the real I. That I takes birth as we grow older. How it takes birth? Understand, so simple. And if you contemplate and reflect on these things, ah, life becomes so beautiful. You don't worry. You're always in peace and happiness. So from where this I grows, I takes birth. From the experiences the mind has, every experience gathers, it creates a sense of this is mine experience and that I takes birth. Did you understand that? Compare it with the mirror. Fifteen times you have seen the mirror. You have fifteen images. That is I. That is I. I told you, Alison, you know, to skip and see it, and I'm just taking it. See, this is wonderful. I told you, you should listen to me. <laughs> Sometime. It's a dad uh, uh, power to say, <laughs> not the son and the daughter. I made my son my father, so there is no problem. <laughs> now there's a solution. You dissolve it. So as the person grows, especially in your family, in your relationship, or outside, give respect to their eye. Be happy. Be happy. Don't allow your mind to talk unnecessarily. Don't allow the mind to talk when it is not necessary. Ask your mind, is it really necessary to talk? And your mind, 99% will say no. We have so My wife and my son were arguing on something and uh, they asked me, what is your opinion? I said, I have both the opinion. I agree with both. You both have to choose and decide what needs to be done. I don't want to enter it, unless. No, no, I know it. Who knows this functional eye? What is my meditation and mindfulness? Mindfulness and meditation is freedom from this I. Images. So when you have that freedom from I, not freedom for I. And I can tell you, if you have understood what we discussed today, you are free from today. You are living in meditation 24 by 7. If not, it is the problem of that I which is a part of the mind. And that I gathers all your experiences. And those experiences are nothing but the different images. And these images have likes and dislikes. I'm going further. Pain and pleasure. A sense of profit and loss. A victory and defeat. Come on. 
I are good with him and I won't. You still have those impressions. But inside you know that I is not me. It pains you. Still you feel, no, even though I won it, but uh, I did not do right. He may say He may say And these images with the likes and dislikes over a period of time creates an impurities in the mind. Until we purify the mind, forget about peace forever. You, we cannot get everlasting peace and happiness and joy in our life. We may have too much of money, but the happiness and the joy, inner peace and happiness is not there. That emptiness, that hollowness is there. And in order to fill that emptiness, we run. We are constantly at work, physically, mentally, professionally. The mind is also constantly working in building that relationship but it has a wrong foundation. It will never happen. <clears throat> do whatever you want to do, it will never. Are you getting it? Huh? You're young, you know, so it's uh, for, you, for your future. <laughs> they have already been either suffering or enjoying. <laughs> Let them do whatever they want to do, and <laughs> that includes me also. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a, it's a very future life. <laughs> so the entire journey of this mindfulness or any meditation, I have sent one article. Did you get a chance to read it? Did you? I didn't get it. Oh, you didn't get it? I'll send it again. So what happens? What happens? Now I'm jumping and then we'll start our meditation journey. So now you are practicing regularly. It's not a part-time job, you know. Okay, I went to the restroom and now 24 hours I'm free. No, you have to live in meditation 24 by 7. <laughs> I have done it once a week. <laughs> Eat your food once a week, then let me see what happens. Go to the restroom once a week. Let me see what happens. You see, this is the wrong notion. One wrong notion. Similarly, we have millions of wrong notions in our life. Unless these wrong notions are removed, by understanding these principles, what happens to the mind? You'll be surprised. then the mind is just like a mirror, whether you're driving, working, doing anything, talking to anyone, you're living in a relationship or not living, that mind naturally reveals these principles which I'm talking about to dissolve the problems of stress and anxiety. Are you getting it? Until we reach to that state, we have succeeded in mindfulness. Then what happens? The next moment, you have, you have an event where your mind is going to be angry and some revolution takes place. It applies the principles naturally, your anger turns into a joy. You withdraw yourself. It is not necessary talk. Have a smile, be in peace. Are you getting it? I'm talking of the heart. Once you continue the journey, the, the state of the consciousness has reached. You have not earned a million in a day. You collected, 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 profit, 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 and then now you have a million. You have ten. Similarly, these practices helps your mind to purify, becomes like a mirror. And once it becomes like a mirror, you are just sitting 
You're drinking a tea and coffee and some revolution takes place. You had a problem in the past and you find a solution. You have a job. So that comes, first is the glimpse of awakening to a higher consciousness. The second step is a realization. Now we use the term realization. Now you realize the mind is now not attached to the eye, the images of the mirror. It is now communicating with higher consciousness, my true nature. And the true nature can never put you in problem and distress. And the life changes. It changed the life of Buddha, it changed the life of great masters. This is what the meditation is. Why you have become so serious? <laughs> so serious. Does my beard make you so serious? <laughs> this is what happens. So when we say mindfulness, you know, it's okay, close your eyes, one minute of mindfulness, five minutes of mindfulness. This is marketing gimmicks. It doesn't work. Let me say one minute of going to the restroom. I'm watching. Go to the restroom and return after a minute. <laughs> Not possible. But due to the gimmicks in the marketing, we make the mindfulness possible one minute, two minutes, five minutes, right? It doesn't work that way. It's not a part-time job. It doesn't mean that you need to practice five or six hours every day, no. Practice regularly, passive, maybe 50, 30 minutes and 40 minutes, one time. And then you have to see how the mind is responding. You have to learn from the experiences. You have to allow the mind to move into the same state of mindfulness that you had practiced in the morning. So it means what? I have to maintain that conscious awareness all the time until I live in the waking state. That changes the mind. You all are wise enough, so let us start our journey. So I need not to say anything more. <laughs> Close your eyes, sit or lie down, whatever is more comfortable to you. <coughs> See that based on what we discussed, we will uh, practice. We practice the mirror. We discussed the mind, if it becomes a mirror, a revelation takes place and that dissolves all the challenges of the mind, challenges of the life. <clears throat> so, mindfulness. Education with the principles, eyes are closed gently. First, experience. What? The eyes are closed gently. The mind is not habitually squeezing your eyes. You are aware. <coughs> you are also aware that we are not going to do anything. What you have to do to remove the images from the mirror? You know the answer. And that is where the first step is very important. It slows down the speed of the mind. The moment you slow down the speed of the mind, those images start dropping. So we have an indirect approach. And that indirect approach is being comfortable. Look at the neck joint. Looking is not doing anything, remember. Make sure if I ask you to do anything after the session, let me know. We are not doing anything. So, looking is not doing anything. You look at the neck joint, you feel the sensation. Who? That is your experience and you know it. You experience the steadiness in the neck joint, that you know it. That knowing is important. At every moment you know. <clears throat> that
That is what happens. You see yourself into the mirror, but 200% you know it is an image. It is not you. See that. With that awareness, if you practice, only one session is required. Shoulder joints. Awareness, yes. Experience, being comfortable. Hand steadiness, you know it. What? This is an image. That image. Look at the hip joint. <coughs> Awareness. Experience. Where is that experience and knowledge? You are comfortable. You have this feeling of sensation, natural. And you also experience the steadiness. You are slowing down the speed of that subconscious and the habitual mind that is constantly at work due to the impurities and that moves the body. Knee joints. <coughs> the moment you see the neck joint, the habitual mind returns and it says, yeah, I have a problem with the knee and you lost your awareness. You will lose your experience of being comfortable. I'm simply asking, maintain your awareness. In the field of awareness, we move into experience and knowledge. Ankle joints, the entire body, the entire body. Being comfortable, sensation, and steadiness is there. Uh, let me remove your wrong notion. Uh, you, all your mind will say, I have reached to attend this class. But when you are comfortable, then only you have reached here. That is mindfulness session. Now choice is yours. In that state of the steadiness, we will employ the same awareness, experience, knowledge. Look inside the head in the space. Pay attention. Simple awareness and attention. You have the highways, and the vehicles on the road. There is a mental highway and the vehicles are the thoughts and the feeling and the past and the future. Thoughts, feelings, sensations, impressions, memories. They are the images. So look inside the forehead in the space. Emptiness or blankness or the simply the space and on the surface, you see these thoughts are coming and going. Let it come and go. There is no, nothing happens to the highways. <clears throat> what is the principle? Simple. Awareness of the thoughts in the space below the thought. Thoughts are vehicles. The space is permanent, highways are permanent, vehicles are moving. What is the point? What is the knowledge? You see that your image in the mirror is separate from you. You see the thoughts in the space are separate. You know it, you are aware of it, then what happens to these thoughts? Let the thought come into it. Past, pain, memories, feeling, sensation, anything, let it come and go. You are separating the thoughts from the space in awareness. You cannot do it physically. And that is one way to purify the mind.
in the state of being comfortable, experiencing the sensation in the body with the knowledge of steadiness. You're looking inside the forehead in the space, the space and the space is nothing but like a highway. Highway never moves, highway, highway never goes anywhere. The master talks about this in details, so I'm using that as a step. Images in the mirror appears. In reality, they are not. But in order to move to that step, we will settle the body little deeper. That would be our next step. Look at the head and the neck. Experience the sensation, relaxation and stillness. We are not in a hurry. Move the mind. Looking the head and the neck, almost looking every cell of the body, touching. The mind touches every cell of the head and the neck outside. It experiences sensation, relaxation and stillness. It will decrease the frequency of the thought the frequency of appearing and disappearing images in the mirror. I'm just correlating. <clears throat> and then you look inside the head in the space, continue to experience that space, that sensation, relaxation and stillness. We are not doing anything. Awareness, experience, knowledge. So now you know the frequency of thought is less. The mind has changed the direction from outside to inside. And the mind almost likes to do nothing. Remember this. Let us follow that. Move the mind in the right arm. <coughs> Let the mind touch every cell of your right arm. Then experience, then experience sensation, relaxation and stillness. Then look inside why we look inside and why we <clears throat> why we looking into the space. The principle says we have to change the direction of the mind from outside to inside. Why we experience sensation, relaxation and stillness to purify the mind. The mind is not carried away by the past. All those impressions lies in the body. Clear understanding. Look at the left arm. Be there. And experience sensation, relaxation and stillness. Look inside the space. Instantly you are aware of the space or the darkness or emptiness. It's good. You're changing the direction of the mind. Every teacher points to the truth through different steps. But there is only one practice of mindfulness or meditation. Chest in the belly. Looking the chest and the belly, good. Feeling. Experiencing and knowing 
there is a sensation, relaxation and stillness. And then looking inside. Looking inside appears abstract. I can understand. You all are intelligent. But looking inside is a reference point to become aware of the space inside. What is inside? There is only one. What is outside? There are trillions of people, places, objects and things. See that? I'm applying another principle. It's a fact. It's a truth. Look at the right leg outside. Sensation, relaxation and stillness. Inside. Look inside the right leg is a reference to know is the mind moving inside. When the mind moves inside, it gets dissolved into the space. It sees the emptiness. Why? There is only one inside. There cannot be trillions inside. It is a movement from many to one. Look at the left leg. Outside sensation, relaxation and stillness. Inside the space. You don't imagine it. You become aware of it. You experience the space. That is Does it happen in one day? Depends on you. Don't intellectualize the process. You don't intellectualize your driving. You will destroy the very driving. Once you have a skill set, once you follow, you maintain your awareness, experience and knowledge. The entire body from the top of the head to the toes. Take your time. Move the mind. Look the entire body. Let the mind touch every cell of the body from the top of the head to the toes. Body appears one. Appears but it is made up of trillions of cells, many systems and organs, and the mind reflects on that. So how we are going about that reflection, experience of the sensation, relaxation, and the stillness. You cannot divide the sensation number one and two relaxation and the stillness. You see a pointer? And then look inside. The mind is 100% sure nobody can enter in you. There is only one. Is mind aware of that oneness inside? You are already there in meditation. But that one is disturbed by the many images that we have created. I'm a husband, I'm a wife. I was stressed, now I am not. I did this thing, I did that thing. The mind is constantly just reflecting on these images. This is the problem. And if you remain, you are maintaining your awareness of only one. I am. That is all. I am stressed, one image. I am happy, second image. 
I have a good relationship, third means I have a bad relationship, fourth means I'm a man, women, I did this and so on, activity are nothing but the images, my friend. Awareness, experience, knowledge. You're not doing anything. Awareness. The mind may pick up awareness and the knowledge of sensation, relaxation and stillness in the body. The space inside, the thoughts are moving on the surface like the vehicles, the space is the highway of the mind. Anything can happen. What is the point here? That mind remains clear all the time. One way of knowing it. Other way, the oneness is there. I am. The rest are images. What is this I am? It is awareness. What is this I am? It is my experience of oneness only. What is the knowledge that I am is my real nature? It's not a thought process. First I am, then I become. Husband, wife, son, daughter, stressed, happy, joyful. But the mind needs to be educated. To have a freedom from this mind, not the freedom for the mind. There is another way when the mind merges with the life force. And we will use that tool today, coming from the Tantra. Look at the breath. Breath goes in and out. Know it, experience it, become aware of it. Don't focus. You don't focus on the noise of the vehicles coming from outside. They come and go. Same thing. Breath is going in, gone. Coming out, gone. Like this. Like this. I did not ask you to focus on the breath. Because the focus means you are making an effort, you are doing something. And the moment you engage the mind in doing something, especially in this practice, it will destroy it. Awareness, knowledge, experience of the breath going in and out. What is that experience? You feel the sensation of the breath going in and out. Ah, that sensation you may feel inside the nose or at the tip of the nose, that's okay. And one more part, attention. What is that attention does? You are aware that you are not changing the rate and the rhythm of the breath. Three-pointed awareness, first-pointed awareness. I will point you different points of awareness and follow the journey. First point of awareness, experience of sensation, relaxation and stillness in the body. Second point of awareness that the mind is looking inside with reference to oneness. Third point of awareness, the breath is going in and out. Fourth point of awareness is the experience of the sensation of the breath going in and out. Sixth point of awareness, no change in the rate and the rhythm of the breath. Don't intellectualize, it happens in the field of awareness. 
like you, we all are sitting in the one space studio. That's all. I'm aware of you all. You are aware of me. It is not that I need a four-pointed awareness to become aware of you four. See that? But still I'm giving a reference point so that your mind expands. Seventh point of awareness. We are going to merge the mind with the energy. Why? The very mind with those images disappears. That is why. So the seventh point of awareness, look at the right arm. Another point of awareness, the moment the breath goes in, the mind moves inside the right arm from the shoulder to the fingertips. The moment the breath returns, the mind moves from the fingertips to the shoulder. Casually, naturally. You are not changing the rate and the rhythm of the breath. You are not doing anything. The moment the breath goes in, the mind becomes aware of the right arm inside. The breath returns, the mind becomes aware of the breath, aware of the right arm inside. I just talked about pointed awareness. Same thing to the left arm. In the field of awareness, the breath goes in. The mind moves inside the left arm from one corner to the other end. Breath returns. The mind moves there, simply moves, looks, feels, aware of it, experiences it, whatever you want to say. And then see what happens. You may experience some tingling in the numbness the moment you start moving the mind on that part. Accept that. Recognize that. The changes are bound to come. Now the right leg. Mind moves from the right side of the waist to the toes. When the breath goes in, no change in the rate and the rhythm of the breath. Status quo. Sensation, relaxation, and stillness. So who interferes? The images. Those images goes to the intellect and it starts intellectualizing. No, my leg is bent, how can I move? No, the breath is short, but the leg is tall longer. No! Don't you become aware of the, any part of the body instantly? Without the mind thinking of the shape and the size and the mass and the weight and the color. Yes, I'm talking of that awareness. Then the left leg same thing, looking, feeling, mind moves, the breath goes in inside the left leg, the mind moves inside the left leg as the breath returns. Everything is happening in the field of awareness, knowledge, experience. When you know the things as it is, it removes the wrong notion. When you experience it, it changes the mind to change the brain.
Now the entire body. Breath goes in. The mind moves to the oneness inside the body from the top to the toes. The breath returns, the mind moves from the toes to the top of the head. You will experience as if you have bypassing the body. The moment you have that feeling, the body becomes totally still, freezing. Sometimes you may experience it as sinking, it is rising up. You may see different colors. Indication, mind is changing. How simple it is. We haven't done anything. Now, move the mind in the spine from the top center of the head to the tailbone when the breath goes in and the mind rises up when the breath returns. Breath is the same, no change. Principle is simple, coming from the Tantra. Where the mind goes, there the life force goes. Where the life force goes, or the prana goes, there the mind goes. We are applying that principle into today's mindfulness journey. And I'll leave the breath. Simply the mind moves in the spine. At exactly at the center, the middle, top of the head, tailbone, tailbone, top of the head. When the mind moves, you feel that experience, you have that experience of sensation. And if you have that sensation, is nothing but the prana. You're there. The images will turn into a thought, it will ask you what is next. Know it, the mind has not to ask what is next because we are doing nothing. Thoughts and the highways, vehicles in the highways, you know it. You have to simply maintain that awareness.
is not rushing to move out. Bring your awareness on the left palm. Just be there. You'll feel the sensation when I said so. Bring it on the right and the left. That is a testimony and a validation where the mind goes there, the prana also goes. Raise both your palms, place it on your eyes, open the eyes inside the palms. Now your experiences bring the hands down and sit up. We will share our experiences now. I want to see your faces. Let me open the light. So that numbness is uh, an experience of uncomfortable? Is that a question? Yeah. Um, I don't know. Yes, numbness is not exactly a feeling of uncomfortable because it's a new experience and the mind brands it, labels it as it is an experience of being uncomfortable. So that is what I said, we have to remove the wrong notion. Any physiological process that happens in the body, when the body is totally still, there has to be some kind of numbness, maybe some time tingling. Mm -hmm. uh, the science picks up only, I'm just taking one thing, they talk about, uh, what is that, GSR is known as galvanic skin resistance. That goes up when the body is totally rested physiologically. So what is that galvanic skin resistance? This is an experience of tingling. <laughs> because we did nothing. Right. So there is nothing to worry. And the second part is also important. Our mind does not remain the same every day. It changes. 
So I can hold on myself to pose as I'm calm, but something inside is full of turmoil. <laughs> That's how we live our life. One aspect. Then we recognize it. Then there are deeper areas where we don't recognize. There are tendencies, the past impressions stored in the body in an unorganized fashion. That poses a lot of problems. That is why you felt uncomfortable throughout the practice. So it is the mind. Solution, regular practice. Understanding those uh, moments of the mind. How are you doing? Yeah, doing well. I was a little, um, I had to adjust as well at one point. Um, I, I, I guess, and I thought about not adjusting. Um, and okay. Then I, and then I, you know, felt that I was. No, more, it's okay. It's... I felt more comfortable if I would adjust. And later on, you are okay. I was felt much better once I adjusted. Much better. Ah, yeah. yeah. That's a that that's a way one should do. How are you, sir? Um, as Stephen pointed out earlier, I was kind of fidgety, and I think that fidgetiness kind of came into it. I was having a hard time. My mind was racing because I came from a busy day and just to sort of stop it was like hard for me and so my body is aching because we're working out on a bunch of things so I was fidgety because I was sore when I crossed my legs and, um, so I was struggling with that and then I just finally said you know this is just my mind playing with me just you know let it all go and it has gone and it let go you should have said it early <laughs> That's what I was stressing, awareness and experience and knowledge, awareness and experience and knowledge. <laughs> what do I experience? Well, no, for example, we're talking to you, the mind says, no, 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 how you should respond? Should you react? Should you ask the devil to stop it? You see that? Couple examples. The mind, why the mind, you are talking to me, let me talk to David. And those thoughts go away. It's a shift of awareness. You see? Yeah. There is an experience. So I'm experiencing the mind is asking me, I'm not good, you're uncomfortable, come on, let me know. Mind, highway, thoughts. I give those pointers. <laughs> you see them? I gave those pointers. Yeah? Highway never changes. The street will never change. <laughs> what changes? Vehicles. What changes? Thought. So through the thought, I recognize, I experience that I have, I am visiting. Can I separate? Gone. See that? That subtle is the journey of mindfulness. Yeah. I knew that I was uncomfortable. Yeah.